One of the most important questions that we get, the most simplest questions rather, is that how to calculate your zakat. So we can understand this from the confusing questions that people ask. Now the simplest way to understand this is that remember zakat, I'm going to first talk about some misconceptions, we're going to clear some misconceptions. Zakat is not due on your money as soon as you have it. Number two, zakat is not due on every new bit of money that you receive that you count a year from, from each set of new money that you get or each new nisab you get, right? So for example, if today I earn a thousand pounds is my salary and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I retain that same thousand for one year, then I'm going to give zakat on it. Then the next month I get another thousand, so I've got another anniversary for that. No, it's not like that. The way zakat works is that you have to pass one year on your wealth before you have to pay zakat. But it starts a year before that. So the way it begins is that, let's imagine there's a, a guy who's in a young youth who's in school. They then get their first job. Until now, they were literally hand to mouth. They had a bit of money, you know, 100 pounds, 100 dollars, 200 dollars, whatever. But they never had any significant savings because they would constantly spend it. But now, mashallah, they're going to get their first job. And imagine they've got no loans as well, right? Because generally a lot of the students today, they come out with loans. Let's just say they have no loans, they're going to get their first paycheck. So, let's just say that I got my first paycheck on the day of Eid. Let's just say, right? The 30th, uh, or actually the first of Shawwal, right? That's my first paycheck I got, let's just say. That means, the way this begins is the first time that you get a amount which is called the Nisab. The Nisab generally works with silver or gold. The silver Nisab is generally right now approximately 250 pounds probably about 300 dollars worth is what the nisab of silver is what that basically means that the idea is that anybody who has a nisab who has this quantum of wealth they're considered to be wealthy enough to pay zakat and not receive zakat from anybody else the gold nisab is right now just shot up nearly doubled in its price from like a year or two ago, it's gone to about 4,000 pounds from the last time I checked it. Generally, it used to hover around 2,500 pounds. There's a big difference between the quantum of silver and the quantum of gold. In earlier times, they used to be the same, but silver has become very, very cheap. But the fuqaha, the way they use it is that whichever nisab your wealth reaches, then you go by that and you're considered wealthy. So if I get my first paycheck of 1,000 pounds, 600 pounds, whatever, that means it's more than the quantum of silver, right? Because that's the, that's the lower one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that. So that means I've got more than 250 pounds, 300 dollars. So now my clock begins to tick. I have to now wait for my anniversary. I'm not, there's no zakat due yet, right? Now, throughout the year now, let's just say I got my first paycheck on the first of Shawwal, right? The, that money is the first time I've got that significant amount of money. Now, I'm, I'm going to mark that date. The next, first, the next year that first of Shawwal comes, this is the important part, that's when I need to check, do I still have a nisab, at least 250, 300 pounds, right? Nisab fluctuates, so you'll have to get the updated price for your time that you do this, right? But this is around the same price. Now, obviously throughout the year I've been making money, I've been spending money on my expenses, that's fine. My year will consider, my anniversary, my year will come to the end and my zakat will be due as long as at the beginning I had a nisab and after one year I still have a nisab. And number three, the third condition, in, during the year I did not go down to zero. Because let's just say I had a thousand pound but in two months I spent it and I never got another paycheck. Right? That means I went down to a zero. Maybe I even went in the red, I had to borrow money. That means this, this, this clock ticking, this year, has actually ended. It's cancelled. It didn't end. That means I have to restart it from the next time that I get over 250 pounds, the quantum of silver, approximately 250 pounds, right? Then my, my date is going to be pushed back because then I have to wait another year from there. So remember, the condition is that you have to, get the, you have to become owner of an isab, and then one year has to pass, where you don't go down to zero, it will fluctuate. You can go become a millionaire or you can go down to two pounds. That's fine, as long as you're not down to zero. Then when the next, that same date comes the next year, remember it's Islamic date. If you're going by Gregorian date, you're actually cutting out 10, 11 days a year, 
right? That's cheating, right? Um, so it's by Islamic date. That, so, so when the next year comes, if I still have any sab, now if I don't have any sab on that day, I've only got a hundred pounds on that day. That means there is a nisab at the beginning, but there's no nisab at the end, which means no zakat is due. No zakat is due. Now, if there is nisab at the beginning, that's when my clock began, one year passed, Islamic year passed, mashallah, I did not go down to zero, and on my anniversary date, first of Shawwal, mashallah, I've still got a nisab. Now, I could be, now I may have 5,000 pounds, or maybe I've just got 300 pounds, I've got over a nisab. Now I must give zakat on that day. What, how do I give zakat? I basically, on that day, I calculate 2.5% of whatever I have. On that day, that's all I need to look at. Just that day, how much money have I got on that day? So if I've got a thousand pounds, my zakat is 25 pounds. If I've got 5,000 pounds, my zakat is 125 pounds. All right? And if I've got 400 pounds, then my zakat is that much less. That's what, now, let's just say the day before first Shawwal, uh, somebody gave me an advance Eid gift of another 5,000 pounds. Just the day before. So when I get to the first of Shawwal, that's my anniversary, and I've got over a Nisab, and now I've got, mashallah, 10,000 pounds. I had 5,000 on my own, I got 10,000 now. It only came in the day before. I have to pay on 10,000 pounds. Because I just, it's so easy. This is the Hanafi way of doing it. It's the easiest way because you just have to look at the two ends. As long as you still have a nisab there, you just check the value on that day and you pay in all on that. Right? So I'm going to have to pay on 10,000. I'm not going to say, oh, I had 5,000 from before. That's my average throughout the year. Right? And this 5,000 just came yesterday, so I should wait another year on that. No. Likewise, if I had 5,000 the day before, and tomorrow is the first of Shawwal, my zakat due date, but I make a big spend, right, for needs or whatever. I give it a gift. I spend 4,000. I've only got 1,000 left the next day. Then I will pay zakat on only 1,000. If I spent most of my money the day before and now I've got less than a nisab, then there's no zakat. And I have to wait for another year from the time I actually get a nisab. Some people try to, some people, you know, don't get clever and say, okay, tomorrow's my zakat date. I don't want to pay zakat unless it's too much money. So I call my wife the night before and I say, you've been a wonderful wife to me throughout, you know, mashallah, the last year at least. So here's a gift for you. I'm going to transfer this money over to you. So now tomorrow when the first of Shawwal comes, I've got no money left. Well, I've got maybe a hundred pounds left because I've transferred it over to her. She didn't have that much money. Now her year starts from then because she's just become owner. Now she starts from the 30th of Ramadan, for example. Now when her 30th of Ramadan is about to come the next year, the 29th of Ramadan, she comes to the husband, man, you've been a wonderful husband to me this year. I want to give you a gift and she transfers the money over to him. That's, that's not allowed. That would be haram to do it for that reason, obviously. But technically speaking, I'm just trying to explain to you that you just have to look on your day. And that's the most important thing of what your assets are valued on that day. In terms of what assets and so on, what you're supposed to value on that day, right? We will look at that separately. But I really just wanted to explain that it's not about every bit of income you receive. And it is not about... Um, uh, what do you call it, waiting for every lump sum of money to uh, pass a year over it? No. It doesn't matter what you receive in between the money. If you go right up or you come down, as long as you do not go to zero, all of that is just fluctuation. It's all ignored until your zakat date comes again. Now, that is why I mentioned in another place, which you can check out, you must have a fixed date. You can't fluctuate. You can't keep it arbitrary. And that date must be from where you initially became an owner and did not go down to zero, right? Now, I know lots of people have forgotten that date. That's why they can then get another date, right, which they fix for every year, the second of Ramadan, the first of Ramadan, the 30th. Of, I wouldn't do 30th of Ramadan because, it, you know, you'd have to go on the 29th because sometimes there's no 30th of Ramadan. So hopefully that explains that, inshallah, and that makes it easy for you to now work out your zakat for yourself, inshallah. Jazakallah khair and may... Allah allow us to pay our zakat on time and well. Assalamu alaikum.